Welcome to the Prophecy Club. I've got Patricia Green on the phone again today. She's the founder of Joy Ministries Worldwide, and she gets people saved, baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, trained, equipped, speaking in tongues. She's author of four books, about to be five. She sees Muslims get saved from her books. She goes all over the world speaking and ministering, and God began to speak to her, and I mean audibly, in her prayer closet. Yes, she's a big proponent of the prayer closet. And those prophecies were coming to pass and still are. And today she's going to continue telling us more about specifically America. So, Dr. Patricia Green, welcome back to the Prophecy Club. Thank you, Stan. It's great to be back. What do you think is coming in September? Well, when you look at, in Scripture it says that, that we've been given, that the Lord has given us the, the sun and the moon and the stars as signs and as seasons. We will be heading in September to the final blood moon of the, of the Tetrad, and we will also, in, on September 13th, will be the end of the Shemitah, which is supposed to be the season of giving the land the rest. So given the fact that we, were, we will be ending the Shemitah, And then heading into that fourth blood moon on the 28th of September, I believe all of that is very significant in the spiritual realm. That blood moon will be seen fully over Jerusalem. My husband and I will be in Jerusalem to witness that blood moon, and we will be there for the Feast of Tabernacles. There have been other people that have noted the correlation between the end of Shemitah and things that have happened in the United States such as the markets falling and those types of things. And so I really believe that September is a very key month for things that are going to be start to be moving here in, in the United States of America according to what the Bible says and what we have seen as a, as a past history of what has happened at the end of Shemitah is why my spiritual antennas are, are very high and very in tune for what's going to happen in September. Well, go on and tell us more about what the Lord has shown you that is coming to America. When, when I say that I have received a message from the Lord, it's, it's during my time of prayer, time of worship, spending time in the Word, worshiping Him, and I hear a voice, you know, speaking these words. Now, it's not an audible voice. It's, it's a voice of the Holy Spirit speaking these particular words into my mind, and as I hear them, I just record word for word, what he gives me, and I journal them, and I I date them, and I record them. And this is one of the messages that Holy Spirit had given to me regarding America. But you hear words, not with your ears, but in your spirit. I Yes, I hear words. Yes, I've had that. I understand what you're talking about. Yes, yes. It's as if someone's whispering into your ear, but it's not audible, and and, and, and he downloads it. Now, let me also share something with, with people, too, as they listen, because, you know, I hear so many people say that, you know, tongues isn't important, it's, but, you know, on the contrary, because every single message, every prophetic message that I've ever received was always while I was praying in tongues, worshiping, you know, glorifying the Lord and in the Word. So tongues are very important because it is your direct communication to your Heavenly Father. And when you pray in tongues, you may not know what you're saying, but you are speaking His language, and then He, in turn, downloads to you through that spiritual language it deposits in your spirit, and then it goes up into your mind, and then you understand it as words. So praying in tongues and speaking in tongues is very important. But this is what the Lord gave to me during one of those times. He said, the landscape of America is about to change. There will be many signs I will perform as a warning to your nation. He said, the waterways will become poisonous. The hills will begin to tremble. The stars will lose their brilliance. He said, your sun will begin to emit flashes of radiation. Weather patterns will change. He said, my hand is on the weather. These things will not happen by chance because I will cause them to happen with my outstretched arm. He said, most meteorologists have an explanation for the weather phenomena, but during this time, it will defy all human reasoning. He said, until people come to the realization that I am Yahweh and I am in control, they will be confused about the weather events that will occur in this earth. He said, in the north, there will be warmer temperatures. In the south, there will be flooding. In the west, there will be earthquakes. In the east, the seas will roar with extraordinary force, which could be the tsunami. The central plains will see a great hurricane. 
that will dump great amounts of rain. The landscape will change. And then this is interesting. He said the Appalachians will be the furthest point east before the Mississippi expands its boundaries. The ocean will come as far as the Rockies in some areas. The Grand Canyon will begin to fill with water. And then he said Lake Michigan and Lake Huron will combine to form one large body of water. And he said the geological plates will shift. Okay, let's go back to the Appalachians. Explain that again. Okay. He said the Appalachians will be the furthest point east before the Mississippi expands its boundaries. Now, if you remember in the other word of prophecy, the Lord said that the waters of the tsunami would only come as far as the Appalachians. Right. Okay. And he said before the Mississippi expands its boundaries. Well, there have been other prophets that have seen the, the Great Lakes open up and come down through the, and expand that Mississippi. So you're saying that basically the Great Lakes are going to open up where the easternmost boundary will be the Appalachian Mountains all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. Yes. That's what I thought you were saying. Wow. Well, when I did this DVD called Meteor, the Destruction of America, which I understand that you had seen several uh, months back. Uh, anyway, when I did this, I pulled up various maps that various prophets and holy servants of God had seen, and they'd drawn these maps, and times where angel has visited them, or a, a dream or a vision or something, and the maps did not agree. There was all kinds of... I mean, like, for example, what Leslie was told audibly... Uh, and shown in a vision when she was at the front of our church worshiping. We, at the time, we were praying for America. We had a map of America uh, taped down to the carpet at the front of our church. And she saw these great lakes open up down to Tupelo, Mississippi, and she said, and it may have gone all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. And, of course, when I told that to Augusto Perez, he said, no, no, no. He said, it's going to open up to the Gulf of Mexico. The point is, is different people have seen different amounts of destruction. Some people have seen that there's going to be a little mountain over here that used to be the Rocky Mountains and a little mountain over on the east that uh, used to be the Appalachian Mountains, and everything else is underwater. Then what Leslie saw was just basically a widening of the Mississippi River. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it seems to me like, based upon our sin, is just how much judgment we get. It's, it's mm -hmm. always been exactly yeah. proportional. Wow. Now, here's my question. If we can fill up sports stadiums with Americans that didn't show up to get entertained, but instead they show up rid mm -hmm. their heart, not their garments, but they show up to cast dust on their heads, they show up to weep and wail and to, to ask God to forgive their sins, if we can do that in several uh, cities across America, is it possible that we can reduce drastically what is coming and maybe even a delay into the total fall of America. Absolutely. I believe that with all of my heart. Even as you're, you're speaking, Dan, the Holy Spirit's downloading this to me, and he is saying that I'm going to be instrumental in getting these people together. That's the download that I'm just getting as you were speaking. One of the words that the Lord has, has spoken over me, he said, you are, you are going to preach in the power of Elijah. And he said, you are going to bring the heart of the fathers back to the children. And he said, and, and we know that John the Baptist preached in the power of Elijah, and the spirit of repentance came upon people, and they turned from their sin and they repented. And, you know, and I'm not just the only person. I mean, the Lord is raising up pastors and prophets and evangelists and apostles and teachers. He's raising up the fivefold ministry to be able to preach. The message of the hour is repentance. You know, and we're not seeing that in, in most churches. You know, most churches, we have a feel-good message, and people, you know, they do their hour on Sunday, they leave, and, then, and that's all they give to the Lord. The Lord is raising up an army, an end-time army, to preach in the power of Elijah so that people will repent. But it, as we talked before, repentance begins first at the house of the Lord, because we will be judged first. And I truly believe that what you are saying is that if we can get people together, and it's going to be truly by the power of the Holy Spirit, we will fill stadiums. Spirit of repentance will fall upon the people, and they will be on their knees weeping and crying and asking the Lord to forgive their, their, first their sins, their personal sins, and then the sins of our nation. And I really, truly believe we can divert this, or at least push it down the road you know, further along so that we don't get this intense judgment. 
Okay, two things I need to say here, guys. First of all, I just put out a new newsletter. It just went to the printer. As a matter of fact, I think it actually dropped in the mail Monday. So it should be arriving on your doorstep. If you did not get it, you can go to prophecyclub.com and download it. And in that particular newsletter, I have this in it. I talk about how God has spoken to my heart, and I didn't have a dream on this exactly, but basically that with this money that is going to come from this oil thing and from the GCR, what I'm supposed to do is to take this message to America and then take the message around the world that Jesus is Lord. And I had this dream, actually I've had two of these, a vision and a dream, showing me in sports stadiums. 720 of 14, one of our congregation members and I were setting up DVDs on a table in the hall of a hotel. The spot was not very good, so I told him I'm going to walk down the hall to see if I can find a better spot to put our book table. And I didn't find one. I came back, and he was gone. But I heard this noise coming from back behind one of the doors. So I walked over to the door, opened the door, and it was a room. And I walked into the room, and all of a sudden the room began to grow quickly from a hotel room all the way up to a sports stadium. And instantly I was in the Dallas Cowboys sports stadium. That's where it was. And there was a man on stage that was kind of tangled up in the microphone cords. The crowd was laughing. By the way, it was packed. <laughs> and another man on stage said, here he is, the founder and president of the Prophecy Club, Stan Johnson. Of course, you know, I'm on all his attention brought to me. <laughs> I turned to look to see, and they were all looking at me and all ready to listen to me. But all of a sudden, that anointing came on me. I walked to the uh, front, picked up the microphone, and immediately began to lead all of them into worship the Lord like I do in my prayer closet. Today, we're making three DVDs. Come and go with the Prophecy Club to Israel. November 5 to 15, Leslie and I will take you on a biblical archaeology and a Bible prophecy tour. A tour like none other. What makes our tour different than the other tours? Well, we're going to take you to the traditional sites the other tours go on, but we're going beyond. We're going to show you the places and give you information other tours can't. In 1991, Leslie and I went on a tour with Ron Wyatt. He showed us archaeological secrets in Israel we're going to show to you, such as the iron spike that sealed the tomb of Jesus, proving Gordon's Calvary really is the tomb of Jesus. And you're going to pick up brimstone from the city of Gomorrah. You'll gather tar drips from the slime pits of Sodom. You'll visit the more likely birthplace of Jesus, not the one the tour buses stop at. In a special escort, you'll get to go behind the gates at the Garden of Gethsemane and pray. And if the drilling permit has been granted, we'll also go pray over the future drill sites for prophetic oil. Yes, you'll see many of the traditional sites, but this tour goes way beyond. Call 310-402-4042. That's 310-402-4042 for more information. Seating is limited. 310-402-4042. Today we're making three, you know, because it's not about us. I'm, I'm yeah. about to cry thinking about that. But what it's saying is that God is merciful. He is going to lead a mass revival, and I'm going to be part of it, and I believe you're going to be part of it, Patricia. There's going to be, yeah. Here's what I plan to do is have a team, actually several teams of ministers, where we have these meetings going on at sports stadiums, two or three sports stadiums each week. And by the way, it's not going to be a little two-hour meeting. It's going to be Friday night, all day Saturday, and all day Sunday to Sunday evening. And, and it's going to be various speakers coming in, and it's not going to be entertaining messages. It's not going to be how we can get blessed. It's going to be trying to save our nation from the wrath of the Lord, trying to delay. We can't stop some of the right. judgment. I think right. we can stop some of it. But as far as the total fall of America, we cannot stop that judgment. That is That, that judgment is set. But... I believe we can delay it, and I believe we can reduce the severity. I mean, instead of a 1,000 bombs, hey, maybe only 900 fall. Okay, I mean, something like that. The judgment has to come because the people have to be saved. And judgment is what draws people to Jesus. I hate right. to say it, but it's true. So, Patricia, I'm going to say what I just said between the broadcast to you. We're going to have to have you come in and make a DVD. Okay, you got to put this on DVD, all of this. Okay, I know you've got more to share, so back to you. Say okay. on. Okay, and so part of that message also, too, he said, this is a warning to the church. He said, tell the people that hell is expanding. He said, this saddens my heart. I never created hell for mankind. 
Those in rebellion and disobedience to their creator will be eternally damned. He said the landscape of America is about to change. But then here's the encouraging part. He said, I will establish cities of refuge for the ones who know me intimately. These cities will be a a place of safety under my wing of protection. He said, call to me and I will show you and guide you to a city of refuge in these perilous times. Stay close to me and I will instruct you. In the dark of the night, some will have to flee. He said, but my angels will protect you and my spirit will guide you. Do not fear my little children. I am with you and I will never leave you nor forsake you. You see, whenever the Lord puts out his hand of judgment, there's always, 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 when he judges us, it's always so that we can return to him. So there's always a plus side. There's always something like the light at the end of the tunnel or the rainbow after the storm. And I love this about the Lord because when all the heavy stuff that he gives me, sometimes it gets very weighty. It, it, it weighs me down. But yet, when I hear him say these encouraging words, you know, you know, just stay close to me. I'll instruct you. I'll guide you. Do not fear. You know, I'm with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Those are the words that I cling to. You know, when I was around Dimitri Dudeman, Mm -hmm. There was a different spirit. I I knew that angels were around him all the time. And when I knew he was coming into the city to speak, and of course, he'd always stay with us in our home. Man, I would get on my face and repent of anything and everything. I thought I might have even been close to doing (laughs) because 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 I knew I was going to be in the presence of a real prophet. Patricia Green, I feel that with you here, sister, you and I are going to do some mighty things for the Lord. Amen. This is this is only the start of what we're going to do together. Uh, you're going to be at those sports stadiums. Amen. You, you're going to be calling people out of the state. Look, there's going to be some running and there's going to be some cheering at these sports stadiums. But they're going to be running out of the bleachers down onto the floor and they're going to be cheering Jesus. They're going to be falling on their face and giving a heart to the Lord. Mm-hmm. And this is not going to be just, oh, yeah, a little, you know, Jesus coming to my heart prayer. This is going to be wholesale confession of sins. We don't do that much in America, but I'm going to have them confess. There's a matter of fact, part of what I'm also going to do is ask them the same the same thing that people of Nineveh did. They wore sackcloth, which is black. Okay, Mm -hmm. and I'm going to ask everybody to wear total black, not Mm -hmm. a stitch of another color, Mm -hmm. all the way down to their socks. Everything Mm -hmm. is black for three days. During this time, and no food or water, I mean total fasting, Mm. no food, no water for three days. And we're going to be praying that God will spare this nation and give this nation a little bit more time. I don't mean spare it, stop it, because it's written in six different chapters in the Bible. He's not going to not hit America, but we can reduce it and we can delay it. I received this message in July of 2014. I have not posted this message, so this message actually, this is the first time I'm publicly posting this particular message. This is not in any of my books or on my websites. And this is the word from the Lord. He said, the battle is about to begin. He said, do not remain silent, child. Whatever I tell you, shout from the rooftops. He said, war is coming to America. There is wickedness in high places, both in the spiritual realm and the natural realm. They are plotting behind the scenes to take America down. Important information was given to the Russian government regarding the United States, and the Russians will use this information to attack the infrastructure of your nation. Many will hear of this plan, but will ignore it, thinking it could never happen to their beloved nation. There is wickedness in high places in government, banking, and independent companies who line their pockets with gold at the expense of your people. He said, truth has been suppressed. Your country has become a nation of lies. Darkness is about to overcome your nation. A deep darkness will cover the people because they love the lies and not the truth. But he said, all is not lost. Do not despair, my children, for out of the darkness comes my glorious light. Um, I want to share with you also, too, about you were were speaking about um, ministering in stadiums. It was back in 2002, I was in a prayer with the Lord. It it was in a very deep, deep valley in my life. I was praying in the Spirit, and I just asked for the glory and the presence just to to fill my room. And as I was praying in the Spirit, uh, His glory literally just filled my room, and I was on my knees, and I I was crying. 
But the words that, that came out of my mouth initially was, Lord, I, I'm not worthy to be in your presence. I'm not worthy to be in presence because his, his glory, it was, it was so intense. And the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, I want, to, I want to show you a vision of what your future ministry is going to look like. So I saw this vision, and in this vision, I was ministering in stadiums. And I, was, I saw it was at a football stadium because there was platform stages set up on the grassy field. And as I looked out over the audience, it was a stadium, and I saw these particular lights. They were, they were long, square lights. Uh, and the Lord said, that's, that's uh, Anaheim Stadium. And he said, child, he said, as you, as you preach, he said, people are going to be getting healed in their seat. He said, where there were no eyes in sockets, there will be sockets. Where there were no limbs, there will be limbs. He said, there are going to be supernatural miracles that are going to be happening. People will be giving their lives to Christ. And he said, child, I'm showing you uh, this ministry. But he said, if I give that ministry to you now, he said, it will destroy you. And he said, so I, w- I will open up that ministry in my time and in my season. Well, once again, <laughs> I- I'm about to cry. But, I mean, I don't think I felt the Lord like this, this strong in a long time now. The anointing is like so strong on me in this broadcast right now. I know that I know that I know that we are going to be doing those sports stadiums together. You're going to be there speaking. I know it. Amen. 8 30 2014 i had this dream the dream opened up and i was on a mountain made of sandstone representing people and i realized i didn't have all the tools i was going to need to climb all the way to the top of the mountain the mountain was huge it was taller and bigger around than mount everest it was the biggest mountain on earth and i was only about two percent of the way up this giant mountain not far at all I looked straight down the mountain and I could see it was not but a short distance to the bottom. Just a hop, skip, and a jump, and I would be right down at the bottom. I looked at the road that I had just come up, which was winding, more gradual, wound around the mountain, and it was an easier path to take to reach this point. But I decided to take a fast way down. One of our congregation main members was there, and, and I left him to head straight down the mountain, and sure enough, just uh, uh, with hiking heels and shoes and backpack and leather gloves, Just a hop, skip, and a jump, I was down at the bottom of the mountain. This represented what happened in 2000. When Y2K didn't happen, then they threw away all of the prophecy ministries, and Prophecy Club was one of the few of them that survived that. Anyway, as I'm at the bottom, I got a core drill, drilled a two-inch by two-inch hole into the red sandstone. But the tailings coming out were not red, but they were all colors, red and yellow, black and white, (laughs) like the song says, precious in my sight. And that represented all of the human souls that were going to win to the Lord. All kinds of colors were represented. I headed then up the mountain, once again, very fast. I came right back up to the place where I had left just almost instantly. And, of course, this represented that when this finances come in, Prophecy Club will just explode. Matter of fact, my agent has us all ready to go on about 150 stations. (laughs) We're in about 80 stations when Y2K hit. I'll never forget March 20th of 2000, I had to cancel 60 stations, worst day of my life, because everybody had just stopped their support. Well, we can go back to sleep because nothing is coming. Well, the problem is, as you know, and as a lot of prophets have been told here lately, that this is coming and it's not going away. And so what God was saying is he's going to, with just a hop, skip, and a jump, not only bring us up to where we were but it's just going to explode and take us up to the top of the mountain to win the souls that we're supposed to win. And you're going to be there. As a matter of fact, you're going to come and make a DVD for us, right? Yes, that's correct. I will. Okay. All right. And so, folks, we will be announcing when Dr. Patricia Green is coming in, where you can meet her. And, by the way, will you be willing to pray for people and minister to people while you're here? Oh, absolutely. I I love to do that. (laughs) And do, do you see, well, I'll just ask you, what happens when you pray and minister? People get baptized in the Holy Spirit, and they get their prayer language right away. We see people getting filled with anointings and giftings. You know, the Scripture says that Jesus said, you know, freely you have received, freely give. So every gifting, every anointing, everything that I have, I freely give as an impartation. So I lay hands on people to receive impartations 
for ministry, for callings, for giftings, for uh, healings, you know, for whatever, whatever it is that they need, financial healing, emotional healing, could be family crisis, whatever it is that they need, I will pray for them and, um, and, and impart. Okay, so what we plan to do is after the Prophecy Club meeting on Saturday night, we will get her to pray, but then the next morning during church, we'll get her to speak and to minister. Then also, we will tell you more about it, get that all set up. But in the meantime, Dr. Patricia Green, thank you very much for being on the Prophecy Club. Oh, thank you so much, Stan. All right, brothers and sisters, I thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers. And thank you for your regular monthly support. God bless. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. The June speaker at the Prophecy Club is Jim Wilhelmson. He's going to be speaking on America's Destiny, Tribe of Dan, and the Three Frogs. Topics will be understanding the biblical terms for America, a kingdom removed, a scepter change, the Tribe of Dan in America, all about the Three Frogs of Revelation 16, a history showing America is Babylon. How UFOs Relate to a Cosmic Christ, Thursday, June 4th, 7 to 10.30 p.m. The next one is The Clouds of Heaven and UFO Abductions. Topics are, What Did Ezekiel See? The Book of Enoch, Interesting Physics. UFOs, Satan's Plan to Replace Christ with the Antichrist. The History of Nazi UFOs and Why They Lost the War with This Amazing High Technology. The Nazi Trail After the War is End. Where Did the UFOs Go? Antarctica? The alien vehicles, message, occupants, and abduction experiments are the same as form a Nazi agenda. The reasons for abductions, Friday, June 5th, 7 to 10.30 p.m. The next talk is Biblical Time Travel, A New Meaning to the End Times. Topics are Time Travel is Possible, Threats that Can Only Be Explained with Time Travel, Heaven is Outside of Time, What is Time, Time Travel Found in the Bible, Two Lies of Eden, A Counterfeit Eternal Realm, Ancient Knowledge from the Past, and The Tower of Babel, Daniel 8 and the Nazi Time Travel Technology, The Real History Fulfills Bible Prophecy, God's Control Measure and How Time is a Weapon, the Kecksburg and Stephenville cover-up, Saturday, June 6, 3 to 6 p.m. Does the Bible say the earth has hollow places? Can this be compatible with modern plate technology and science? Lazarus and the rich man. Where was Cain sent? Where is paradise and Eden related to Abraham's bosom? Where did Jesus go after his death? Where do demons live and how did they get there? How does CERN, the Devil's Triangle, and the Dragon Sea relate? How does the Nazi expedition and claim of an alliance with, quote, pure Aryans play into this. Does the Bible say the earth has hollow places? That's Saturday, June 6, 7 to 10, 30. So that is four meetings, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, June 4, 5, and 6. A gift of $10 at the door for each meeting, but the best deal is take advantage of our summer blowout. Single DVD, gift of $30, two, gift of $50, four, gift of $85, that's 21 each, seven, gift of $120, that's 17 each, 10, gift of 100, that's $10 each, 20 DVDs, gift of $160, that's only $8 each. But you got to call 785-266-1112. Offer expires soon. That's 785-266-1112 for the summer blowout gift offer. All meetings are at the Prophecy Club, Spirit of Prophecy Church, 2540K Avenue in Plano, right behind the Whataburger. That's 2540K Avenue in Plano, right behind the Whataburger, on the corner of Park and K, like the margarine. And I'll look for you at the meetings. John has proof there is a mystery planet heading toward our solar system, which is causing ice caps to melt, stopping the Gulf Stream, causing tornadoes, earthquakes, tsunamis, extremely hot and cold weather. He says the governments of the world know about it, and they're preparing underground survival facilities. Included in this presentation is a classified map showing safe locations. It's the catastrophes in Bible prophecy gift offer. End of times, Augusto Perez. Coming pole shift, Lloyd Carpenter. Signs in the sun, moon, and stars, John Moore. Valued at $90, all available for a gift of just $25. Call 785-266-1112 or prophecyclub.com. That's catastrophes in Bible prophecy gift offer. End of times, coming pole shift, signs in the sun, moon, and stars. All for a gift of $25.